all, good morning. Good to see everyone. Everybody's kind of this way. I guess that's the shade today. Uh, just please feel free to move wherever you'd like. Uh, just, just follow the shade wherever it goes uh, if you need to. Uh, just reminders that the uh, we do have uh, bathroom access uh, in the annex, uh, just downstairs in the hallway. Uh, also, uh, the only reason we can do this is if we keep our uh, social distancing and are wearing a mask. Uh, as long as we're outside and we're near six feet away from other people, I think it's okay if we don't wear it. Uh, but if you're going to be close to other people, please wear your mask. Uh, and if we are ever having to go inside, we have to wear them inside. Also, there will be an uh, Ad Council meeting at 11 today. I think we're just asking uh, all committee uh, chairs and co-chairs uh, be the only ones to be present for that so we can keep the crowd down. Uh, we'll meet uh, upstairs in the annex or upstairs in the sanctuary, probably in the back. We can spread out pretty good there. Uh, so please remember that uh, following the service today. And I would ask, are there any other announcements that need to be brought to our attention? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you this morning to Mayo Memorial United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Amy Chapman. Man, I tell you, it just, just watching y'all come in here at 10 o'clock in the morning and pull up a chair, it just feeds my soul. <laughs> I hope you know what a blessing you are to me, uh, that you have taken the time and the energy to gather here in fellowship and in worship. Uh, it is, you are beautiful people. You're a beautiful sight. I hope you know that this morning. You have blessed my heart. Uh, being here, uh, being faithful to this congregation, being faithful to this community. Uh, so thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for the ways that you continue to, to pour to pour out your love uh, into, into one another's hearts. If you don't know much about Mayo Church, if you're joining us online, uh, we want to welcome you especially as, as a visitor. And a lot of you are, are also faithful. Uh, it's it's sometimes difficult to gather in times like these, but we know you're doing the best you can and being faithful uh, to, to your presence here as well. It takes a lot of effort to get up and to even uh, turn on and tune in to a service sometimes. So those of you who are joining us online, thank you for your faithfulness as well. I'm always so excited at the end of the service to go back and to see who was there and, and who made comments. So that's one way that you can truly participate in your presence here is by making comments on our, our Facebook live feed. Uh, so we welcome you as well. Uh, we do want to uh, take a moment and uh, just greet one another in the peace of Christ. And to do that, we always like to traditionally here in our outdoor summer worship, we love to turn the camera around and, and just have you stand if you would and wave to one another in the peace of Christ this morning as we gather in Christ Shalom. Peace of Christ to you, friends. As we welcome not only one another, but welcome God into our fellowship here and into our midst, we want to turn to our morning psalter this morning from Psalm 105, chapter 1, verse 11, and verse 45. Your response at the end of the psalm is a simple, praise the Lord. Now let's practice that together. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an ever everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Would you respond with me? 
praise the Lord. Let us pray. O oh, holy and loving God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for the earth, O oh God, for all of its glories, for the ways that you have allowed us, O oh God, to gather in this space and that you have made it holy because you are holy and you have called us to be holy. So God, we gather here on this ground and we take off our shoes, O oh God, and we bow our hearts before you. We ask, O oh God, that you would surround us with the presence of your Holy Spirit and that you would illumine, O oh God, the dark places of our hearts, that you would redeem us, O oh God, for your good creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to turn either in your online bulletin or in your hymnal. If you didn't get a hymnal, you can get those from uh, uh, Chrissy up here at the table. And we're going to sing together, Seek Ye First, number 405. to our time of prayer, joys, and concerns, uh, our birthdays this week, on the 28th, we have Jessica Hoosley and Christina Butcher on the 1st, so happy birthday to each one of them, and the only anniversary I know of coming up this week, uh, on the 29th will be Christy and myself's 31st wedding anniversary. I want to thank her for putting up for me <laughs> for this moment. I love you very much. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries we've left out? Uh, if there are any prayer requests uh, that you would like uh, for us to know, uh, just please write that down and put it in the offering plate uh, later on. That's something uh, Amy will get those. Uh, so please do that. And also you could use uh, social media for that also. Is that what we're going on? Thank you, Bobby. I do want to update you on a, a few prayer requests uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, one, I know so many of you have, have texted and asked, continue to be in prayer for Dodie. And uh, we want those prayers to continue, and uh, she's grateful for them. Right now, our prayer focus is for her to be able to be accepted into Cardinal Hill for a bed to, to come open and for her to get to go to rehab. She had a snag in her insurance. Last week, thought she was going to be able to go to on to Hazard on Friday, and uh, something happened, and she wasn't accepted there at Hazard. So that was a little bit of a frustration. Uh, but they're working on. Uh, she said she's hopeful for a transfer tomorrow to Cardinal Hill. So uh, let's all pray that that will that will happen for her. She is still suffering from some AFib and from just some physical needs as well. And so certainly not only those. Uh, logistical things for her to be able to for God to make a way for her to be transferred but also for healing to continue in her body she's 
uh, the places where they grafted her skin especially are having a little trouble healing and some AFib uh, continuing in her heart. So keep her in your prayers, of course. I did get to talk with uh, Kathy Preston this week and, Kath and to pray with her, and Kathy was grateful for her home church and for your prayers. And um, also uh, uh, chatted with Lynn Schmidt some on, online, and uh, Lynn also asked for your prayers to continue. Any other pr prayer requests that we want to share here together, if you would indicate those by the showing of your hand. Thanks be to God for those. Let's go together to the Lord in prayer this morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Together let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, as we come before you today, we are grateful, oh God, for the ways that you have already met with us here. We thank you, God, for the abundance of your grace that has gone before us and led us to this place. We thank you, God, for those who we have who we have seen this morning with our eyes and for those that we know are gathered in their hearts online, for the ways that you continue, God, to draw forth your church. We thank you for this gift of communion with you and communion with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We give you thanks and praise and honor and glory, O oh God, and ask that you would be glorified in this time of worship, uh, that we ourselves would be put aside, that we would be humbled, O oh God, in the presence of the living Christ. And O oh God, we thank you for this community that uh, carries one another's burdens, that lightens each other's load. God, we thank you for the ways that even, even being here, it's like a, a breath of fresh air. Even in the midst of the summer heat, oh God, there is something special about the body and about being present with one another. So we thank you, God, for this time of fellowship and this time of communion. God, we lift to you those who are in desperate need among us. We thank you for our sister Dodie and for the ways that you've already answered our prayers. And oh God, it seems selfish to ask for more, but we know that you are merciful and mighty and that you want full healing and restoration for, for Dodie and her body. We thank you, God, that you have already gone before her to make a way to where she will go next, to the care that she will receive. And we pray, O oh God, that we would trust you, uh, not that our own will would be done, but that yours would be done in her life and in her path. Lord, for our, for our sister Dodie, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And, O oh God, we ask for continued prayer for, for any among us, O oh God, who are in need. We thank you for the lifting of the hand and the showing of the faith, uh, that, we would, that we would come before you, God, that we would express our need, that we would know you are listening, that you welcome us, that you invite us into this holy moment of prayer. We thank you for the work that you're doing even now, in this moment, in the hearts of those who have lifted their hands. Quietly, O oh God, in our hearts, we ask in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, for uh, Kathy and for Lynn, our, our friends and our family, uh, even in the distance, O oh God, you bind us together with cords that can never be broken. And we thank you for them, O oh God, and ask that you would continue to provide for them in their bodies, that you would bring about healing and peace in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And, oh God, we thank you especially for the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us, for we do not know often the words to say or the words to pray. But, God, even now, you see the intent of our heart, and you honor this prayer that we pray together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There's a prayer response in your in your online bulletin. It's a simple chorus uh, called "More Precious Than Silver." I invite you to sing that with us now. Mm -hmm. 
sing it two times through if you need to just listen the first time and, and, and learn it and then sing it through the second time. prayer to give of our tithes and offerings, just a reminder that uh, our offering basket is here on the desk. Just look for the Lysol can and that's kind of our paper way. So just lift it up and set it down there. Uh, you can also do it uh, by mail. By mail, on, excuse give me somebody give me the P.O. box. 669. P.O. box 669 Paintsville or online uh, through our website. I think it's through PayPal. You can do it that way also. Uh, just either way that you uh, feel comfortable doing that. And as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, may we reflect on how gracious God has been to us. Thank you. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, as we dedicate these gifts and offerings to you, we also dedicate our lives. God, you are precious. More precious than silver or gold. We ask, oh God, that you would receive our gifts and receive our lives and that you would work together all of these blessings to work for you in this world which you have loaned us for safekeeping in Christ's holy name we pray amen let's stand together as we praise the Lord praise God from whom all blessings fall praise him all creatures here Today, the gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 13, uh, more of a be, to be continued series of parables that Jesus teaches about the kingdom of heaven. Matthew says that Jesus put before them another parable, starting in verse 31, saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. And it is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in that's hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, and then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, 
they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we ask, oh God, that you would make these words to us alive and active in our own hearts. And, O oh God, may these words that you have given to me to speak today be pleasing to you and you alone, for you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' holy name we pray together. Amen. You may be seated. The series of parables reminded me of when my kids were little and, the, and they took great joy in their discoveries of what seemed like to me very ordinary things. But to their new eyes in the world, these items were like treasures. Uh, while to me, they were merely rocks or sticks or a leaf or a pine cone. Uh, but for years uh, in their rooms, we housed these various collections in uh, shoe boxes or in Altoid cans or in uh, little cardboard boxes of, of these items that were stored away in our kids' rooms where they had been deemed valuable. And one of those notorious treasures that we had collected was, was a shiny black rock called slag uh, that my kids would gather from the historic Fitchburg furnace in, in Irvine at Aldersgate Camp. Uh, the furnace there, uh, we, that's one of the things that we really grieved this summer of not being able to experience is the, the, the fellowship and the discipleship that takes place at Aldersgate Camp. Uh, but if you've ever been to Irvine, if you've ever been to camp, raise, raise your hand if you've been to Aldersgate Camp before. Several of you. Great. So down the street from camp, there's this giant stone furnace uh, that uh, where kids visit during their week at camp, and it's a massive strong stone structure there in, in Estill County. It uh, was the largest iron furnace in the world in the late 1860s and early 1870s, and it provided iron for the railroads. And it was there because of an iron ore in their surrounding hills of camp. And, and they would use the thick forest to, to burn and to fire up the furnace. And so the slag, this shiny black rock that I'm telling you about here, it, it was a, a byproduct that was left over from the iron. And it's all over camp. It's, it's like a volcanic rock. It, it looks almost like a, a shiny black piece of coal. So inevitably, every year, all the kids at camp, and mine included, they wanted to find uh, what was the most unique piece of slag for their collection. Uh, but that would often happen, what would happen upon finding it, what they thought was something valuable and unique would end up showing up all over camp. And then the next year they would go back and it was there again. And so after a while, it just kind of lost its value. You know, it's like yeah, at this point when they're in leisure ministries, they're looking at the little mini campers and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's just slag. It's not anything special, you know? <laughs> just throw it back in the creek and, and it'll be there next time. So you see how quickly uh, we lose interest in this idea of a treasure hunt as we grow and as our eyes become more accustomed to seeing what, what is readily available to us. Most of the time I noticed that the slag, even in the mini campers though, the slag that they had collected with the intentions of, of taking it back home to keep, a lot of times it was left in the cabin or on the porch, and so, so we, the camp deans, uh, Noah and, and Lauren and Jill, and a lot of us who have served as deans at camp and James, uh, we end up collecting what, what's been lost, gathering up all their spoils that, that they left behind and putting it back for another camper to discover because each time, isn't it wonderful to discover something new? And I love that. I love, I love them watching them uh, discover and find that, that piece of slag that they think is so valuable and, and to, to treasure it up. So in this section of, of parables, Jesus, who we see is a master storyteller, he gives examples of what the kingdom of heaven is like. It, it's similar, this series of parables, to similar week, to the previous week's parables with the parable of the sower and the, and, the, and the seed and the wheat and the weeds. 
and we continue to uh, bring in the sheaves of the harvest, so to speak, which we remember that Jesus said is plentiful, but the laborers, he reminds us, are few. But it's here that we find Jesus seemingly naming common and ordinary, even unwanted things, like, like flags or like rocks and leaves and sticks, and comparing those things to what it's like in the kingdom of heaven. Mustard seed, yeast, buried treasure, a merchant searching for fine pearls, a net thrown into the sea capturing both the good and the bad fish together, similar to what we heard last week with the, the wheat and the weeds growing up together. Mustard and yeast, a thief and a merchant. Mustard is a weed that a farmer would pull from, from a field. Okay, But here in this parable, Jesus turns it around and uses it to compare it to God's kingdom. Mustard seed, starting from the very small but growing into a shrub that's big enough, a tree eventually that shelters the birds of the air. And then he, then he brings out something as common as yeast or leaven. Used then as the agent that, that bloats or rots, rots corpses. Used then as something that was unwanted in the house when a woman was preparing her house for Passover celebration. They got rid of all the yeast. But here it's a good thing, somehow, when it's hidden in the flour. Uh, one uh, Bible scholar that I read this week made note that he feels like Jesus in comparing these things, that, that God is fermenting the empire of the heavens within the world like the woman who mixes or spoils flour with yeast. Finding the empire of the heavens is compared to a man who finds a treasure in someone else's field. And then he liquidates all his assets to buy the field without telling the owner about the treasure he found. Notice that? Okay, he buries it, then he goes and buys the field. Okay, so what was this man doing digging around in somebody else's field in the first place, right? He's a thief. And then merchants. Merchants were held in public esteem about as highly as our culture values a used car salesman, one with a bad reputation, that is. I, I personally know many uh, reputable and valuable and lovely used car salespeople. So not, that's, not a, that's not a diss there. But you get the point, right? These, these parables, they, they elevate convention, conventional unwanted person and unwanted items to describe discipleship in the empire of the heavens pointing out again and again what we know to be true that god's kingdom the kingdom of heaven is very different than the kingdom of the world the kingdom of god while at first invisible and hidden grows into a, a sheltering and life-giving plant for god's creatures the kingdom of god it spreads throughout the dough transforming everything it touches the kingdom of God, it doesn't produce cowardice and retreat, drawing back, but it electrifies people with abandon. It electrifies people with courage and with joy. Once again, Matthew presses us to consider the nature of discipleship and to recognize that the teachings of Jesus form disciples who value the contemporary equivalence of weeds and yeast and thieves and merchants. So what are these equivalents, we ask ourselves today? I would suggest that they're, that they're us. That they're you and me. All of us who are gathered here. Ordinary people who are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. God's very good creation, which has been redeemed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if you look around, where can you not find people, right? They're everywhere, unless, you, unless you're lucky enough to, to go to on an abandoned or deserted island for a little bit of vacation for a while. But no matter where you go, they're there, right? It's like, like the slag at Aldersgate Camp. Oh, there's some more of it. There's some more people. What began from the dust of the earth and took form in the garden has grown to inhabit the earth in abundance. So how do we, the disciples of Jesus Christ, how do we care for this treasure that Jesus is describing, if that's the case, if this treasure 
in the kingdom of heaven is you and I, and I believe that it is. Just a few weeks ago, we got together and welcomed, uh, I think they're both here, to, Kathy, we welcomed uh, Kathy and Noah into membership of this congregation of the United Methodist Church. And I thought of the ways that we welcome one another. I see many of you here, and I remember you standing up in front of our church and us vowing to, to love and support you. And I thought of those membership vows in thinking of this parable and of this call to to treasure one another. And I'll remind us of that now. We say, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment of Christ? And you inevitably respond, yeah, we do. And then, and then I say, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? And will you include these persons now before you in your care? And you say, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ we will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful to their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Now sometimes we say that often and we say it quickly and we read it in that moment. I say it again here because do you hear that promise you've made to one another? It's an important promise that you've said. It's, it's easy to value a new baby that comes into the church through, ba through baptism. And gosh, I love that. Carrying, you know how much I love carrying a new baby around and how sweet it is. It, it's like shiny and valuable. It's like new slag that you just discovered. But what about that child during its teenage years or during times of, of sin or rebellion or during their elder years when we don't see them anymore? Does that vow still apply? Does that covenant we made still apply? No, notice that's, that's a we covenant. It's not just me. It's not just whoever the pastor here is of the church. That's a we covenant. We will. Do we like slag, leave it behind, or do we do clean it off and carry it home and keep it and treasure it for each one, for each person? Uh, this past uh, January, we got to take our youth, uh, Noah and, and uh, Lauren. Where'd Noah go? Bathroom. Oh. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren does all the work, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> But we got to take our youth to uh, Winter Blitz, a retreat that we often invest in uh, for discipleship for our youth. And um, we got to hear the speaker. And it was kind of, we kind of made fun of it because it was a weird little acronym that he, used, he introduced us to. But I, but I came back to it today and I was like, you know, it's just so foolish that it, that it makes sense. And he introduced us to this acronym that he said he, he calls COGPAL. And he would get up on the stage all the time and the kids would like laugh and roll their eyes at how, how ignorant he sounded and how foolish and naive. And he'd say, I'm a cog pal. And he'd make them say back to him, I'm a cog pal. <laughs> and, and so we just kept calling each other this, this cog pal. But he explained that that stands for that acronym C, child, O of, G, God, P, person, O of, worth, cog pal, child of God person of worth. His name was Wes Olds. He used to be a United Methodist pastor here in Kentucky, but has since moved to Grace Church in Florida. And um, I did a wonderful job explaining the uh, offering grace to the youth who were there gathered at the Winter Blitz conference. But that, that stuck with me, and that tends to do that. That's why, we, that's why we have those acronyms. We could remember things a little more easily that way. But remember that today, that you're a cog pal. You're a child of God and a person of worth. And so when we read this parable of the treasures of the kingdom of heaven, we can insert ourselves. We can insert one another. We can remember our identity. Our, our, our Kentucky Bishop, Bishop Fairley, so often loves to remind us to remember our identity. And he says over and over, remember who you are and remember whose you are. And that reflects our identity in Christ. And, and that way, when we know, when we see one another, when we see people 
who annoy us, who, who were like, oh, yeah, that's just another, that's just another person. Uh-uh. That's a cog pal. That's a child of God. That's a person of sacred worth. Everyone we see, it never gets old. It never loses its value. A person never loses their worth. At the end of this parable, Jesus looks at the disciples and he says, have you, you got all this? You know, have you understood? And I feel like that's kind of like when you're teaching a, a Sunday school lesson and the kids are like, yes, yes, Mrs. Runyon, we get it. And then they walk right out and they have, they, they can't tell you one thing that, that you said, right? I kind of feel like the disciples are just like, yeah, yeah, what, what do you think he means? <laughs> you know, just, because it's like, what? Do we really get it? The disciples, though, they answer yes. And even if they're not being completely honest, that's okay. But do you understand today? Do you get it? Do you get it for yourself? Because if you can't understand um, in your own heart the worth that you are to God, do you get it? Do you get who you are? And do you get who you are? Because if you can't get that, you can't treat others as if they are of worth and as if they are of God. Do you understand today that you are more precious than silver, that you are more costly than gold, and that nothing that God desires compares to you? We can sing that to God. We can turn that around. But can we, can we reverse it? And can we allow God to sing it over us, to sing, Child, you are more precious than silver. Child, you are more costly than gold. Child, you are more beautiful than diamonds and nothing that I desire compares to you may it be so in the name of our beloved Christ Amen as we consider all these things it's, it's a good and right thing for us to confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord So I invite you, if you would, to stand and to affirm your faith and the reflection of it as we turn to the Apostles' Creed on page 881. This is what we believe as children of God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. closing hymn. You know I always love to put in a little Christmas in July. And so this being the last Sunday in July, I invite us to turn to number 246 as we sing together Joy to the World. Pay especially close attention to the pruning that is taking place here. Allowing God to uh, not infest the ground, the soil of your heart with, with thorns. Uh, that can happen easily in the world, that we just get entangled and trapped in sin. And make this a time of, of, of joyful praise to God, allowing him to prune the garden of our hearts as we sing together of Christ's gracious life and the joy to the world that Jesus Christ is born.
imagine how weird that looked for somebody to be driving by and hear us singing Joy to the World outside of the church. <laughs> Our benediction today is an affirmation from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 and 37 through 39. We celebrate today that nothing can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord, except ourselves. And so we remember today that there is nothing that you can do or that you have done that causes you to be of less value in the eyes of God and to return to him. This is a simple answer to this question, just as we answered yes, have we understood this? As Jesus' Jesus's disciples answered, all we have to answer to this is no. If you don't